guys, it's Amy. I am here to do another Q&A. Before I get started and before I forget, I wanted to mention that this little cutie jacket here is from Shein. It's so cute. I love the colors. I think I'm gonna be wearing this in Europe because I think it will photograph so well with the pop of red and blue and white. And I think it will be a great jacket just to cover up uh, or just to you know wear on top of my dresses when I get cold. I'm actually gonna also do a styling video. I have a huge collective haul. I've been buying a lot of clothes since I would say like November last year and I've been postponing doing a video just because I don't know those videos take the longest to make in fact all videos take a very long time to make so I hope that you guys appreciate all the effort we put into our videos but yeah so I'll definitely be doing a collective haul and I'll be talking a little bit more about this jacket but if you guys are interested I will also put the link down below of this one so uh, without further ado, let's get started with our questions. Eileen Park, I'm not sure if I said it wrong, but her question was, would you recommend buying a Chanel rectangle or square mini? Also, I would uh, like to go for the black. Should I get the lambskin or the caviar? Love your videos, by the way. Um, really, it's a matter of personal choice. Um, I love both. I like that the rectangle mini opens wider and that if you have like a smartphone such as this one or the any of the plus size in the iPhone, it will fit a little easier because with my mini square, I do have to kind of like, not force it in, but it kind of just fits. It literally touches both sides of the bag. So uh, that is a con in my opinion for the square because it is more narrow. Um, however, with the square, it is it has more depth, so I'm able to fit my camera in it. Also, you want to keep in mind for the strap drop, with the square, it is a lot shorter. It is between 20 inch and 21 inch drop. For me, with it, for me, it's a perfect drop because I'm petite. Um, but for anyone that is taller than me or who is not as petite as me, they will find that the longer strap will suit them better. So it's really a matter of personal choice. Lambskin is really not that delicate. It is still a good leather. Of course, it will show scuffs more readily uh, once you know you do you get a nick on it or whatever. But they buff quite easily. Uh, that being said, the caviar is not scratch proof. You can also scratch caviar, but maybe it will show less because it already has all the um, caviar. Um, texture on it and with caviar I find it a little bit more casual whereas lambskin it feels more luxe and more soft uh, and a little bit more shiny even um, so yeah it really depends on your personal preference I would still stick with caviar just myself it's my own preference at this moment uh, but my little brooch that I have uh, the black brooch that is in lambskin and I found that it was fine in terms of where of course we don't tend to scratch our brooches very often um, but I've you know several occasions where I kind of like run my na nails on it and it was fine I didn't see anything Eva Seidel uh, what do you think about the reverse monogram mini I managed to get my hands on it it's on its way uh, but I'm a bit nervous I will if I would like it or not I do like the classic monogram and it's really hard to choose which one would you go for? To be very honest, when the reverse mono came out, I wasn't quite a big fan of it, just from photos. However, like anything, sometimes you just warm up to it or it's an acquired taste and the more you see it, the more you like it. And then one day I saw it in person and I tried it on myself and I loved it. So it's really a matter of uh, personal preference again. Uh, and I honestly think that it's quite whimsical. It's quite suitable for the backpack just because the backpack itself is such a trendy-ish item. Uh, and I think the reverse monogram or any more sort of trendier canvas print on that bag will be very, very good and very suitable for the bag. Uh, so I say go for it. Not the only advantage of just uh, staying with, you know, boring not it's not really boring but you know boring classic uh pieces or classic prints is that it's always safer so in the long run uh you may not get tired of it as 
quickly or as easily so it depends on your personality some people stick with uh, the same things all the time they go with a certain color all the time a certain leather material all the time the certain print all the time but other people are more adventurous and they like to do different stylings and they like to experiment so for those people I think it will be super suitable for them to go with either uh, I myself am I don't know like I said before I like classic pieces but I also like trendy pieces so I think it will just depend on my mood that day or on that specific item whichever one I will pick I just went with the regular monogram just because I bought it early on and the reverse as well as the uh, infra rouge was not available at that time Karen is asking what are your thoughts on the LV uh, BB Nice or nice have you considered adding it to your collection uh, no I haven't I think it's really cute and I love I absolutely for me LV the most classic print and leather for me is still monogram and vachetta I love that combination so much I especially love it when the leather patinas and becomes brown uh, or honey gold color Basically, I love the aging of that leather against that monogram print and I like the niece. Uh, I can appreciate the bag or the, I guess, the toiletry piece, uh, but it's not for me. I don't have a need for it, so I won't be adding it to my collection despite it being such a popular item. So, so in style. I love your videos, by the way, girl, and I think you're doing such a great job. Oh my god, your brooches are so pretty. Which brooch do you find the most versatile? Uh, I've heard that the crystal may fall out. Do you have that issue? I currently have a large brooch with the quilting design, which I love. And I'm considering to get a smaller one with crystals or pearl. Um, great question. I honestly think that all of my brooches are quite versatile. But if I had to pick one, uh, and you guys can refer back to my last video, I have three brooches. But if I had to pick one, I would choose my smallest brooch in silver with uh, crystals to be my most versatile. I feel that sometimes, and that's just my opinion of course, but I feel that sometimes with the larger brooch, it is harder to pair with certain tops. Uh, whereas I find that the smallest brooch that I have goes with everything. And I feel that maybe because mine has crystals as well. So it's not the plain one and I feel that with the crystals, it really goes with anything. It can still be quite casual if you put it on a t-shirt. Uh, but it can also be super, super dressy if you put it on a nice jacket. I haven't had any issues with fallout so far. I also had that... Um, Kind of worry when I first bought my very first brooch and I asked my essay whether that's a problem or a known issue and she did agree with me and uh, she did admit that it was a known issue in the past however they haven't had a lot of repairs recently or on the more new items so uh, it seems like maybe Chanel has revamped their glue. Long story short I'm very happy with my all my jewelry pieces from Chanel whether they have uh, crystals are not this one doesn't have any on uh, and I I believe that they will take care of us if any of the crystals fall out and hopefully they will still have that particular crystal or pearls to replace it um, but so far I haven't had any problems and I highly recommend them I really really love them shopping with a passion Amy I've, I'm having a major issues with my question mitsis I'm so sorry uh, my first one I had for six months with with minimal wear and I saw glazing issues. They gave me replacement. The second one I had for six months now and it is having glazing issues again. They told me it would uh, they would send it for a repair. I called back for the status uh, and was told that it was deemed unrepairable and defective and it is being shipped back to the store so that the store will call me with options I've received when it's received. If they offer me a store credit, should I take it or get the Boshet Mitsis again? Uh, it would be my third one. Help. I'm so sorry to hear and it's it's so frustrating. I feel you girl. Um honestly if I was never offered for my case, I was never offered a replacement or whatnot. However, after the second reglazing, I, I did have two reglazings, uh, by the way, 
my first one was not done very good so I had a second one redone after a few months later uh, but so far after the latest reglazing it's been holding up so I do have other bags also to rotate which helps me um, not have to use that bag constantly but getting back to your question I think if it really did happen to me and I, if I had to constantly go back with my new purchase within every six months uh, for the same issues I would probably just take the store credit now that's me personally I feel like you know not necessarily for this bag but for any other bag if I'm gonna constantly have the same issues with you know a bag I will probably just let it go I will probably just give up and take the store credit and move on to the next bag I feel like if initially they had offered me a store credit for the bag the very first time I would still have just given the bag a second chance and went with the second one but I think by the second and third time, I would probably just give up and get another one. And the beauty of that is also that, you know, LV is constantly coming out with beautiful designs and lots of options. So even if I did like the bag a lot, um, you know, I feel like I'm not, you know, missing out that much in the sense that I do have lots of other options and lots of new things that might come up also in the future to choose from. So yeah it could really go either way but i feel you girl i'm so sorry that's happening to you and best of luck whether you went with the credit or if you continue to try and give the push and misses another chance isabella schwing i love your videos like usual uh, where in europe are you going this summer where did you buy your chanel pre-love have a nice day we'll be spending three nights in london two nights in paris and then we'll be in barcelona for a few days uh, and then um, also several different pockets of places in spain and italy and then finally back to london and then back to vancouver so it'll be the four of us traveling together and also it's all our first time going to europe so it'll be super exciting i'm so looking forward to going to paris i've always always wanted to go to paris growing up because I speak fluent French so I'm so excited to go there. I know we'll have different accents because I do speak a Quebecois French um, and of course in Paris they use a Parisian French but you know we'll understand each other. <laughs> That's no issues. Um, so yeah I'm so looking forward to it. I just I know it'll be a really hectic trip. As for my Chanel jumbo flap single flap I bought it pre-love from the Facebook buy and sell and chat group so I will try to link it down below if not go visit my Q&A number 26 I have all the details there Carissa CC which one is heavier the Chanel Deauville or the classic double flap in jumbo size um you know what I don't have a double classic jumbo flap but I did sort of um, weigh my Deauville tote. So keep in mind that mine is in the denim material. They make it in, in three different materials as far as I know. So they do have, the in the current season, they have the raffia. So it's kind of like a straw-ish material, but it's a softer straw. Uh, I felt that that one was quite heavy. And then they have a canvas one, which is very similar to mine, which is in denim. Um, I just feel like maybe my denim one is kind of more similar to an actual jean material. I do not have a proper scale to weigh my bag, but I, what I did is I weigh myself on my scale and I have a numerical digital uh, scale. So it was, I guess it was a little bit more accurate that way. And I'm, and then I weigh myself holding the bag and the difference was 2.4 pounds. So it's not the heaviest bag that I've ever tried on, uh, but it is getting on the heavier side. Uh, but knowing that it is a larger bag and the fact that whenever I use a larger bag, I am usually just in and out of the car or just running quick errands. So it's not so bad. If any of you, and I'm sure a lot of you have the uh, Chanel classic double jumbo flap, Tell us down below how much does your bag weigh when it's empty and we can go from there. Cindy Ang and Suzy Suzy have very similar questions. 
Uh, I've been wanting to get the Enpoint twice since forever, but got the Pochette and M since. I'm still, since I'm still experimenting on downsizing. Now that the Enpoint PM, which is Pochette Nitsis, is out and I'm contemplating on getting that one, uh, although I originally thought that it was too big for me, will you be getting the Pochette Nitsis in Enpoint? And it, it might have a more comfortable strap. Any advice, please? Uh, so, I haven't checked out the Pochette Mitsis in Alpine Leather yet. For me, I tend to not repeat bags, in whether in different prints or not. Uh, so, even though it is a completely different material, it is still kind of the same bag to me. <laughs> so, I, I probably wouldn't get it. Uh, but I can totally appreciate it in leather, especially the Empreinte leather is such a great leather. I still really recommend my twice because of that reason. I love, love, love that mine is in the Empreinte twice. And by the way, one of you told me that it's getting discontinued, so that's kind of too bad if it's true. I, I mean, I don't know if it's for sure, but you did go to the store in Paris and you said that they told you that. But anyway, going back to your question, uh, so between the twice in Alpine and the Bouchette Métis in Alpine, to me there's still totally different bags. The twice, keep in mind, to me is a roomy small bag, but it is still a small bag. It is still very limiting in terms of how much you can really take with you and I'm talking it's it's really bare essentials plus a bit more whereas the pochette mitsis is very very roomy and as far as I was told the Empreinte is even roomier because the leather is so supple and uh, flexible uh, yet strong that it, it really would accommodate quite a bit more. Also keep in mind that the Pochette Mitsis has a detachable strap and uh, yes, I love the fact that it comes in leather and it will probably be a lot more comfortable. Uh, I, I love the strap that is on my twice and the Pochette Mitsis has an even thicker strap so I think it will be even more comfortable although it will be heavier because you can put more in it. So I don't know, I don't know what to tell you, they're both great bags. It really just depends on what's the minimum you can carry. What's the stuff that you usually carry and can you fit all that in the twice? And if you cannot, and if you cannot live with, you know, taking, wearing that bag day to day, carrying the little minimum that, you know, you would compromise, uh, then go with the size up. Just go with the Bush at Mises. It is such a great bag. I still love mine, uh, despite the fact that it has its flaws, but I still love mine. It's again still my top five bags so <laughs> for now i don't think i'll get the new one but i am so tempted though it's so beautiful zeb k hi amy i went to oh so you're the one who mentioned it i went to uh get the twice in france i'm told that it has been discontinued i had one somewhere which they got for me and i noticed that the black the back portion is a few centimeters bigger all around than the front it bothered me so I didn't buy it. I uh, I wanted to ask you if that's how it was supposed to be. I just thought it would be much easier if I just showed it to you. So this is my twice and I think you're referring to this back pocket being wider than the front. So as you can see, I'm holding mine from the top here. Nope, mine is pretty flush. I mean, it's and mine is older too. So. I do know what you're talking about because I have seen this bag being a little slouchier, uh, the brand new ones at the uh, Louis Vuitton store and I wasn't sure why. I think if I didn't have this one and I've never seen this one, I would have probably purchased the, the one that I saw. If, if, if the, you know, the few centimeters larger was all around very uniformly distributed, because at the end of the day, once you fill out the pockets, especially the back pocket is actually larger. Once you fill it out, it will actually um, make it more proportionate. And when you wear it, it will look like two, you know, puffed up pouches on the side, um, which I also love the look of. So I think 
it might just be how the batch was when you found it i'm not sure if they've changed it to make the back pocket even slightly larger and just all around a few centimeters bigger um but i know that you're not happy with it so if you're not happy with it do not compromise and do not settle since you're buying it new anyway so definitely keep on looking and like i said i always feel like with LV or I don't want to say just LV but like I feel like with even with Chanel like these luxury brands they're very good quality and they have their good quality control and whatnot but I do notice that it's still kind of like depends on your luck I do still notice that sometimes it's a hit or a miss and I don't like to say that but it is what I've been noticing as well sometimes I go in for a certain item and I look at all the ones that they've presented to me and I didn't like any of them because I found flaws in all of them and I know I'm being picky but at the end of the day you're spending that kind of money you should be happy with what you take home so sometimes I do go in wanting to purchase something specific but end up coming home with nothing and I just go back another day or I just ask to order another one uh, hoping that it would be in perfect condition or in exactly the way that I wanted it to be with no flaws. I guess in a sense they are, each bag is still unique and the craftsmanship should be there but it is still made by different people so at the end of the day it, there will be some differences and as long as you accept those differences then it's good but if you don't keep looking. Cora Sutton Hi Amy, what tote would you recommend? The Chanel Deauville in the large or the Louis Vuitton GM? I really like your tote, great colors. Thank you so much. I think if I didn't have any totes at all uh, or any luxury totes and if I was looking to buy my first luxury tote, I would probably still buy it in the Louis Vuitton because it's iconic. The Louis Vuitton Neverfull is super comfortable, it's so easy and I love the one that I have in Monogram and Vachetta. Vachetta is my favorite leather, it's very comfortable, it wears really well and I love the, the patina process. So if it was my very first tote, uh, between the two I would go with the Louis Vuitton because it is really versatile, it's really comfortable, it's so iconic and it's, it's more lightweight as well. So my MM size is half the weight that it is the Deauville so that really that really helps on on a day that you're tired on a, or on a day that you're trying to load it up with heavy things um, however if you're looking to buy a second tote like I did I already had two totes in my collection and I wanted to add a third tote that was more in trend and uh, different so I went with the Deauville and I love the style of the Deauville it's every time I wear it it's super I don't know it gives me joy to wear it on me and I think it looks super cool so that's how we go about it at the end of the day I still feel like the Neverfull is more is more practical it's more lightweight and it's still very iconic and a great tote uh, but if you're looking to get something different, then yes, I would recommend it do it 100% for sure. Alan Water. Hi Amy, I am a major fan of your videos. Quick question for you. Do you still own the LV Kensington? If not, can I ask why you sold it? I'm on the fence on purchasing it and selling my Neverfull MM. Thanks Amy, have a wonderful week. So I do not have my Kensington anymore. I did sell it. Um, and here's the reason why. At the time, I had my Neverfull in the monogram and it was still very new and I was, you know, trying to protect the patina as much as possible because when it's new, you want to avoid any liquids or, you know, any raindrops or whatever onto Vachetta. Once it develops that patina, once it's in that nice honey color that's when you know that it will be uh, more weatherproof in that sense so because mine was still quite new i was not wearing it when it was raining out and in vancouver we do have lots of rain uh, so on days with heavy rain i'm totally not wearing my tote and i wanted something else 
it's I, I want I basically wanted another tote that was completely weatherproof that I wouldn't have to worry about going out in the really rainy conditions um, so I went with the Kensington seeing that it was a different style so that it wouldn't be totally the same as my Neverfull but just in a different print like I said I don't repeat prints um, and that's my preference and that's my preference of course uh, but what I realized afterwards is that the Neverfull was a flexible tote so that was where the difference lied and with the Kensington being the structure tote that it is I was able to carry lots but only more on the essential everyday stuff I wasn't able to say shove in my purchases of that day and put like you know a, a scarf and a cardigan in it I wasn't able to do that with the Kensington whereas with my Neverfull I was and of course that was my intended use for the Kensington but I didn't realize at that time that because it was still more on the structured side that that kind of prevented me from you know using it the same way I wanted it as my Neverfull so I did sell it at the end uh, now I still think that the Kensington is a great bag but it is more of a ladylike structured tote so it's a great everyday bag but don't expect to be able to shove in your scarf and your umbrella and your you know cardigan in it those extra things might fit on the top but it, it won't look as good at that point because it is more of a I do feel that it looks better as a hand carry although I love the shoulder option um, but you just can't stuff it the same way you do at Neverfull and that was the reason why I, I didn't keep it because I realized it at the end that it wasn't really what I was looking for um, so that's that now um, so it really depends on what your needs are are you looking to just get another type of Neverfull tote or are you just looking for a different type of tote something that's more structured uh, more dressy then go with the Kensington but if not don't don't sell your Neverfull yet because the Neverfull is one of my favorite bags I think everyone should have at least one that one of a kind of that tote in their collection um, and then just work from there so I hope that was helpful please leave me all the new questions down below thank you so much for watching I'm Amy and I will talk to you in the next one bye